we have a wonderful new project uh, that has basically fallen in my lap today to go over. I have been given a vintage drafting table. Uh, this is a uh, rather large multi-piece kit. I'll put a picture in the description of what an assembled one looks like. But it's a uh, Hamilton drafting table. I am not 100% sure uh, exactly what the numbers mean uh, as far as the, the type and all of the options that probably came with this table when it was built, but it is a Hamilton. It's all solid wood. Uh, it's in pretty decent shape. Uh, there's a bunch of things that we're going to have to go through and fix on this, and so we're just going to kind of get started. Uh, one of the first things I'm going to do is it's got a, a fair bit of wear on the finish, especially down at the bottom where people have been standing against it and kicking it and all of those kinds of things over the years. Uh, so we're going to go through and we're going to refinish it. Um, because of how it was stored uh, in a garage down here in Houston, the area where I live, I'm going to give this as a really good example here. Uh, a lot of the glue that was used to assemble the, uh, the table has somewhat fallen apart over time and so what we're going to have to do is take some of these joints um, we will open them up and we will re-glue them uh, with probably a modern uh, urethane glue is probably my glue of choice for this uh, in all the areas where that has occurred um, that's happened on this rather wide uh, back slat as well as uh, some of the legs are separating as well, so we'll see if we can get those to to separate all the way without damaging them and, and re-glue the entirety of the joint, uh, and that'll that'll improve the, the wood all around. We'll probably go through and break and remake all of the joints throughout. There's been a fair bit of shifting of the wood, um, but uh, the, the way I figure it at this point with how old this table is, uh, the wood's probably as stable as it's going to get. <laughs> So uh, we'll do the repairs that we need to do. Any of the joints that are still all together and, and not separating, we'll probably leave those be. Uh, plan is to kind of go through, uh, sand the surfaces, uh, smooth, uh, clear, and then we'll go through and refinish it. I've got a, a wonderful mahogany stain, and the, most of this looks like it's uh, wide swath oak, uh, to my eyes at least. Um, so we'll go through and we'll stain the whole thing in a mahogany stand and then we'll put a urethane finish on top of it. Uh, the drawer sets are quite good. I'm very happy about that. We've got uh, uh, two drawers that actually go in the table and that's the two drawers that are separate here. And then we have another drawer assembly that uh, mounts in the foot rails uh, of the assembly. Uh, I was also given all the hardware for this table. So as far as the, the wood and the repair goes, really looking forward to how this thing is going to look. It's, it's a really solid table. All of the hardware is steel uh, and I was given that as well. We're going to have to do a few things as we go through. Uh, we'll refinish all the hardware, probably powder coat it. Um, one of the drafting table angle adjust knobs, the original ones is present there. Uh, it looks like the other one was lost at some period of time and replaced with this bolt and nut setup. So we'll probably go ahead and uh, make a new one of these on the lathe. Um, when the time comes and then uh, the, the tabletop that came with it is in it's in decent shape uh, don't don't let the looks fool you it has been sitting in a garage for a very long time but uh, uh, the uh, the top vinyl has failed uh, and separated on it um, however I uh, don't really consider that to be too terribly much of a problem uh, because what we're gonna do is uh, I've already got it's going to be fairly easy to peel off. I've already got the replacement vinyl on order. Uh, that should show up here sometime next week. So when the time comes, we'll be able to deal with that. Uh, the first order of business is to get the table proper set up and refinished so that I can get the table into the house and assembled. Uh, the tops on these uh, uh, these drafting tables are uh, removable. So that, that makes it nice. I can actually do this as kind of a two-part project. Um, the way that the table sets up, there's actually uh, these notches in the top and there's a second board that just kind of sits on top of that so uh, it can be used as just a regular table 
in the intermediate until I get the top uh, set up properly. Um, the, the idea is to, you know, I'm not really doing any kind of drafting here, uh, but what I do do is uh, kind of arts and paint stuff with the kids inside, especially my younger children. They enjoy those kinds of projects and the vinyl on this is a really good surface for that in my opinion. So we'll refinish this up and this will become kind of like a, a craft table uh, for, for me and and the kids to work with. Uh, and it, it solves the congested craft table issue that we have. Uh, I'll probably show that a little bit further on. Um, but uh, yeah, this is the start of the project. I'm going to probably go through and set up the camera here. I think one of the first things that I'm going to try and do, um, and I'm going to work on one component at a time, I'll, I'll be at various stages uh, together. Um, what I'm going to start with is we'll get rolling on separating this out and re-gluing it first. And I, I, I might end up, you know, picking a few spots along here to add a biscuit joint to keep everything on this. Um, the bottom stanchions are good. They, they don't have any problems other than, uh, you know, some, some wear from time. So we'll probably just go through those, remove the finish, and... Uh, might try to get out any dents that we can with some steam, but for the most part, uh, these are just going to go right back on there like they are. Super happy about that. And uh, we'll run through and we'll do all the main rails so that those parts are done and that's good to go. That's a pretty straightforward thing to do. Most of that's just going to be some sanding and some re gluing on, on the wide board. So I'm happy kind of with that. Uh, when it comes time to do the end panels, uh, we'll do those one at a time and we'll go through and we'll separate out all the joints. We'll do all the repairs and glue work that needs to be done. Sand all the individual pieces, reassemble them, re glue everything the way it needs to be. And then once that's done and everything looks good and we touch up all of the corners and finishes, uh, we'll go through and refinish that corner and then we'll do the same for the other panel so we don't have all the parts uh, all apart all at once. So we kind of do it, you know, phase one, two, three sort of thing. And then uh, the drawers, uh, we'll redo those kind of one at a time as we go through and... Uh, get them up ship shape. So kind of the plan is once I have the rails refinished and the two ends done, I can bring that in the house and reassemble it with the top piece on board uh, after I clean up and deal with it. Or I may even just replace the top because I don't I don't think this is original and I'll, I'll show you why. It, it might be, it might be, but I don't I don't actually think that it is because any of you who grew up in an older house will recognize that style of paneling that's been placed on there and all of the tape. I don't think any of that is original. I think this is a replacement piece, in my opinion. But, you know, again, I could be wrong. We'll see what we want to do. Uh, it's just going to be a piece of quarter inch ply that goes on top. We, well, again, we might make a new one and then stain that. If I could find one that was an oak veneered one, I would definitely do that and stain it so that it all matches and it'll look really nice. That way you get like a separate uh, work, work surface underneath that you could use potentially in the future. Um, the table itself has hardware wrapping around. All right, so we're just gonna kind of get set up here. So we're just going to kind of get set up here and I'm going to record myself as we're working and we'll just kind of uh, make our way through this uh, rebuild process. Alright, so I got my uh, food biscuit joiner out, and I've also gotten out uh, my biscuits, my urethane glue, uh, all of my long clamps, 
uh, and we'll go through and mark some biscuit joint locations and then we will cut the biscuit joints uh, commonly along the line probably plan for I don't know like six biscuits uh, on this item and then we'll go ahead and get the surfaces sanded cleaned wetted and glued and have this part of it done and then we'll probably just go through and uh, let that dry and move on to the next component to uh, to refinish <clears throat>
princess. <clears throat> so, kind of decided that this little piece right here, man, that's really on there. I ain't getting that off without damaging the wood. This, this top part here, grain runs this way uh, across. You can actually see the grain styrations running through at about 30 degrees here. If, if I try and put this off, this side's gonna split or this side's gonna split and it's got a large surface contact there. It has shrunk back a fair bit. I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go through and sand everything and then we'll round this over. And this is all up and under the bench anyway. I don't think anyone's ever gonna see it and we're not gonna worry too much about that. The important thing is that it's on there rock solidly and that's that's not gonna fall off so we're gonna call that good enough and we're gonna just carry on sand the entire board down uh, all over um, nice and good and then that'll be ready to accept stain <laughs> Um, it's all vacuumed off we're gonna be using uh, I guess it's not dark mahogany it's uh, red mahogany um, I actually really like how this finish looks on oak um, one of my early properties that I rented uh, to live here in Houston uh, had a brand new set of cabinets in it that had been made by the, the, the landlord actually he was quite a handy fella as well and uh, he used this on it and I've, I've always loved the look of how this this goes and it goes on easy it's a one coat kind of finish uh, you, you hardly have to mess with it at all and then when you're done you just drop a urethane on it to, to seal and I've even used it unsealed although that was rather recent I don't know how that's gonna last just make sure we don't have any goop in the bottom that all looks pretty even uh, typically use these uh, these rags to apply it the, uh, uh, I guess the microfiber cloths, lint-free ones, and works really good. So we'll see how that turns out. And I'm going to go grab my gloves. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. I'll live with that. Oh yeah. That's good stuff right there. I'm happy with that. Get another dab on there. Even that out. Do the other side. Super easy application. Um, the instructions do say not to let it pool, so we're gonna avoid letting that happen. Make sure that we get all of the surfaces that we want to touch up. So it's got a nice kind of even look to it. I did go through this and vacuum it thoroughly prior to doing this step so that uh, I removed as much of the dust from the sanding step as possible from the pores. And yeah, man, 
I'll tell you what, I'm happy with the improvement in look. I think that's going to be just great. Hello! that dry a little bit and we'll come back and uh, uh, wipe off any excess when we're done. Probably might have wanted to put it on a little bit thicker but this is honestly I think that's looking pretty awesome uh, considering that this is like <laughs> probably 50 to 60 years old at this point. Uh, this is going to be great. <laughs> 